Hey everybody, welcome back to another chemistry video lesson. Uh, today we're going to look at what's called stoichiometry. Uh, stoichiometry is a very useful chemistry concept. We use this a lot and we're going to keep using it over and over in a lot of very uh, different topics. Uh, essentially what chemistry, or I should say what stoichiometry is, is the use of chemical equations and it allows us to calculate the amount of reactants and products that are going to be used. So it basically answers the question of how much. Previously what we looked at was uh, predicting products and saying if we had you know, hydrogen and oxygen, we would produce water, we would say what will we form. But in this case what we're going to start doing is talking about how much is going to be formed. So we're going to start answering questions like what mass of water is going to be formed when you have 18.1 grams of hydrogen gas reacting with 12.31 grams of gas uh, of the oxygen. So th th those are the kind of questions we're going to be looking at. We're going to start using a lot of numbers here. Uh, so using our significant figure rules are going to be uh, important as well. So in order to understand stoichiometry, what we first need to do is be able to interpret the balanced equation. I know we've talked about this before, but we want to look at this again in, in a little more detail. So we look at the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. What we find is that we get two molecules of hydrogen to react with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water. That's what the coefficients represent. That's basically what they're telling us. So at the very fundamental level, the very basic, smallest level possible, we would basically have these particular particles reacting with other particles to create other ones. So they're always going to form in this ratio. That's what the balanced equation tells us. It shows us the ratio at which the molecules interact with each other to create the products. It does not mean that that is how much we actually have. Now think about it. Are we really going to be working with two molecules to produce two molecules of water? Pro no, not probably. Most likely in the, the react problems we're going to look at, you're not going to see that kind of thing. So, but what the reaction is telling us is just that it's a two to one to two ratio. Okay, so let's take a little bit more closer look. So let's take a look at how we would use those ratios. So let's say we have this uh, question here. We want to know how many molecules of water will be formed if you start with four molecules of hydrogen. So remember, we had two hydrogen molecules reacting with one molecule of oxygen. Now we know these are gases, so I'm just going to leave the states of matter off. And when they react, they always form two molecules of the water. So in this case, if I start with four molecules okay, of the hydrogen, I want to know how many molecules of the water will I form. Okay, so that's the question that it's asking us. So what we can do is we can easily use the ratios. Now that's pretty, hopefully, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So what we're going to do is go back to our dimensional analysis. We're going to use this to kind of figure out the, the relationship here. Well, for every two molecules of hydrogen, we end up and require, or will form, I should say, two molecules of water. And that's it. So we just use the ratio. And we can see, obviously, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So every time I get one of these hydrogens that I'm going to use in the reaction, I'll always produce two molecules of the water. So therefore, my answer simply is four molecules of H2O. That's how much would be formed in this particular reaction. Okay, So that's how we use the balanced equation. We're going to create these little ratios and proportions to figure out how much is going to be formed. So let's take a look at another example. So in this reaction, what we're looking at is how many molecules of oxygen uh, would be needed to react with four molecules of hydrogen to form the four molecules of water. So actually, let's go back to the previous question. Okay, Let's go back to the last question we just did, or at least the work we did. So this time, we're looking for how many molecules of oxygen would be needed to react with those four molecules of hydrogen. Okay, So let's go back. So in this case, we're looking for how many molecules of oxygen. All right, that's what we're looking for and oops, let's try that again. All right, so we're looking for the molecules of oxygen. So again, we're going to start with our four molecules of H2. And we're going to go ahead and start the same proportion. We're going to go two mo molecules of hydrogen to one molecule of oxygen this time. Rather than the two, we don't have to worry about the two because there's a one here. Because every time I use two of these hydrogens, um, I'm going to 
basically I'm going to need one molecule of the oxygen to make those two. So therefore, I don't need two or four molecules of hydrogen. I need two molecules of oxygen. But that's not it, though. That's not the end of the story. We want to look at these ratios and see what else they can tell us, because there's more that a balance equation can tell us. So let's take a look at this chart here. What the chart is showing us, if we start with those two molecules, we see that's the ratio we saw. It was a 2 to 1 to 2 ratio. Um, but what would happen if I had 20 molecules of hydrogen? Well, if I have 20 molecules, then I would, have, I would require 10 molecules of oxygen, 20 of the water, and again, I get that 2 to 1 to 2 ratio. If I have 24 molecules, 12 molecules of oxygen and 24 molecules of water. Again, the ratio is 2 to 1 to 2. Now, when we have 24 molecules, we could actually say that that's actually 2 dozen. And if I have 12 molecules of oxygen, that would be 1 dozen. So therefore, the balance equation can actually tell us not only how many molecules, but can also tell us how many dozen. So this number up here could be 2 dozen water, or I'm sorry, 2 dozen hydrogens to 1 dozen oxygens to 2 dozen hydrogen, or I'm sorry, I keep screwing this up, two dozen water molecules, okay? So just like I did with the molecules to dozen, as you can see, I'm going to go to the moles. If I have 1.204 times 10 to the 24 molecules of hydrogen, and I also have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen, and then of course the same number for the molecules of water, again, it's a two to one to two ratio. It's still holding, you know, staying the same. Therefore, we can translate this into two moles, to one mole, and two moles, because this is double the number of this. So therefore, the balance equation can not only tell us the number of molecules, dozens, but actually, more importantly, it can tell us the number of moles. So what the balance equation tells us at the end is that there are two moles of hydrogen that are required to react with one mole of oxygen and if I do that, I'm going to produce two moles of water. Now, as we saw in the last couple sections where we were looking at moles to masses and stuff like that, now we have a way to connect back to that. Because we really can't measure the mass of molecules, but we can definitely measure the mass of moles of molecules. And that's where we're going to go. All right, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how uh, a little more in depth how to handle these, these types of calculations. Because it's going to get a little bit trickier. All right, so thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later.